Hi everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Today we are talking about behavior. Behavior is one of the most influential things we can do to improve our mood. It can actually also cause great distress and um, cause more depression or anxiety depending on the behaviors we engage in. So today we're gonna to talk a bit about the difference between adaptive and maladaptive behaviors. In other words, behaviors that help us feel better versus behaviors that make us feel worse. So think about it. When you feel like you're in a funky mood, your behaviors tend to be really different from when you're in a really happy or positive or hopeful mood. We tend to opt out or withdraw or isolate or say no or cancel plans a lot more when we're not in a great mood. And what happens is that becomes a really truly vicious cycle. We opt out of plans, so we go get back in bed, or we opt out of finishing with some accomplishment and we sit on the couch and say, what's the point, why bother? But what happens when we opt out is that then a few minutes or hours later, we look back on our day and we say, huh, see, I was right. Like I should be in a bad mood. I am worthless. I'm really not productive. I suck because look at what my behavior show me is true. I canceled all my friends. I didn't follow through on a task. So we teach ourselves through this cycle what's really true about us, how we should feel. And in cognitive behavior therapy, we talk a lot about intervening at the cognitive level, the thought level, as well as intervening at the behavioral level. Today, we're talking about behaviors. They can be the most impactful intervention that we use in therapy and coaching. So I want you just to simply think about, off the top of your head, what are those behaviors that you engage in that tend to make you feel worse? What do those look like? So usually my patients will say to me, it's things like not hanging out with friends, not following through on tasks, letting hygiene lapse. Um, the, the behaviors they typically engage in to feel good, they're just no longer doing. They're staying in bed, they're overeating, they're oversleeping, they're not exercising, they're withdrawing, they're isolating. If we think about the behaviors that actually make us feel better, what do those look like? Those typically have something to do with some accomplishment for the day. They typically have something to do with something we might engage in for fun, an activity or behavior we engage in just for the sake of it because we enjoy it. And so I want you to be really thinking about ramping up behaviors that make us feel good. Behaviors that make us feel less anxious, less overwhelmed, less depressed or sad, less hopeless. What would those look like? So we call those mood elevating behaviors. I also call those pleasant event scheduling. So behavioral activation is all about reinforcing the behaviors that help us feel better. That's all that it is. It's super simple, but it's an extremely effective strategy for depression. So step one is always to make a list of what those activities could be. Now, creating a random list can be fun, can be useful, but we tend to get the most out of our lists when we choose activities that really reflect our values. So if you're not somebody who loves being outdoors, then don't put things on your list like hiking or kayaking or biking or going to the beach, right? So pick activities that really are in line with who you are, what you value, and maybe even historically what you've enjoyed doing the most. So. Um, I'll talk to you a little bit about what are some of those ideas and what those could look like. The next step is to identify any obstacles to integrating those into your daily routine. So ideally, you're doing something for fun every day. It doesn't have to be something major. It can be something super small and easy to integrate. But I want you to be thinking of it as a daily practice versus uh, if I have the chance this month, I will. Or if I have the chance this week, I will. We have to carve out the time every day to take care of ourselves. And one of the ways we do that is to engage in something pleasant, pleasurable, or fun. So we want to identify what those obstacles are after we make our list of what activities we could engage in that would improve or elevate our mood. And thirdly, we want to make sure that we schedule them in. So oftentimes, if we don't carve out the time for ourselves, 
something else fills that space. There's always a thousand things we could or should be doing in our day. And we tend to drop ourselves to the end of that list, whether it's something for fun or just self-care, we tend to let that go. We don't keep it as a main priority. I want you to keep pleasant event scheduling a main priority in your daily life. So those are the three steps that we want to think about. Identifying the value-based activities we might enjoy that could help elevate our mood. Identifying the obstacles, what could get in the way, and how to overcome those. This number two is really helpful to do with your therapist or with your coach, because a lot of times if we have obstacles, we, are, we tend to not feel as creative about understanding ways to get around or through them. So that's a good one to work with a coach on. And the third one is to schedule these events on your calendar. As silly as that may sound, yes, I want you to put it the same place your appointments are or your work schedule or any other obligations. I want you to schedule them in, in the beginning until they become more of a habit, until they become more automatic for you. So if you have any questions about this, I'd love to hear. I'm happy to answer. Um, I'm also happy to share with you all a, um, a list. There's a list I came across online that has 365 ideas. So a lot of times when I work with patients, they'll initially say, I don't even know what I would do for fun. I can't even think of anything. I've been in such a rut or I've just been had, you know, focused on so many other priorities in my life that pleasant event scheduling has not been one of them. I'm at a loss for ideas. So if you'd like that list, you're welcome to email me, wendy at drwendyoconnor.com. Um, but some of the, the activities that I've heard over the years that seem to be most popular are things like daydreaming about the future, starting a craft, picking a recipe that you might enjoy, getting outside if you're someone who enjoys that, so kayaking, biking, hiking, walking along the water, going to the beach, lying in the sun, picking up a new book that's just for fun, not because you have to read it. Um, what else? Spending time with friends, going to a party, starting a new hobby, something maybe you haven't tried before, taking a class. So maybe learning something new that you haven't learned before that you have a real interest in. Travel. Something simple as listening to positive music. So some upbeat, happy music can make a big difference, right? So any of these things, lighting a candle, um, walking by or visiting somewhere beautiful, someplace that you feel calm or inspired or relaxed. So it doesn't matter what the activity is. There's no right or wrong, but when we tend to feel the most benefit from behavioral activation, it is when we choose behaviors that are in line with who we are and what we value. Your list may be very different from somebody else's and that's completely fine because we want you to engage in activities that are positively reinforced and activities that you want to keep integrating into your daily life. That is how we combat depression. That is how we elevate our mood. That is how we get to a place where we sustainably feel well, is by trying to make sure to check off that box each and every day. Now, some days that box may be easier to check off than others. So some days your pleasant event might literally be hoping that turning on your favorite station on the radio or listening to your favorite CD is going to do the trick. Some days you may actually have more momentum and feel like you can check off a larger box, like going for a two-hour kayaking trip. Remember, start with easy. Start with the activities on your list that seem the easiest to implement, that you see the fewest obstacles for. Start there. That will help build momentum. And as you feel more inspired or motivated, as you start feeling the benefit of engaging in this regular practice, then you can up the ante a little bit. Then you can say, all right, what else can I do? What's something maybe on a weekend day when I have more time that I could engage in that would actually help me feel even better? Not just 30 seconds or a couple of minutes of an activity here, but maybe a couple of hours, maybe all day. Um, another way to integrate it is actually to divide, divide it up into time points during the day. So I might suggest that you try in the beginning, hey, Kara, um, to break the day up into three parts. So you might say, all right, for the morning, my pleasant event is going to be, or my pleasant activity is going to be trying a new breakfast recipe. 
my afternoon pleasant event is going to be meeting up with my friend for coffee. And maybe my evening pleasant event is going to be starting that new show on Netflix that I really want to see. Something super simple, but if we can integrate daily, ideally even a couple times a day, you will very quickly notice that your mood feels elevated. And when our behaviors reflect an elevated mood, our thoughts reflect the same. So sometimes you might find that it's easier to change your behavior than it is to change your thoughts. So start with your behavior, see what sticks, see what you get the most benefit from, rate your mood before and after you engage in the behavior. That will help you determine which of these are winners and which ones you might say, hey, this didn't really do anything for me. Integrate more of those on a regular basis. And then once you're in a good pattern of behavior, once you're on a roll, you might notice that your thoughts are a little bit easier to navigate now. Your thoughts are a little bit easier to change or to modify because your behavior is supporting an elevated mood. Your behavior is supporting a happy mood, a positive outlook, a hopeful mood, right? And now it's easier for us to tweak the cognitions in our head that sometimes get in our way. So that is the uh, quick and dirty on behavioral activation. So your homework this week is going to be to make your list of activities that really reflect your values, things you might enjoy doing. Start easiest to hardest. Identify potential obstacles if there are any. Identify strategies to overcome them. If you can't, reach out and work with a coach or a therapist on helping you get to that place. Um, and making sure that you are engaging in these behaviors every day. Hey, Carly. So glad you guys are here. Thanks for joining me. All right, so any questions, just send me an email. If you want that list of 365 ideas because you're stuck, send me an email um, and I can send it your way. Wendy at drwendyoconnor.com. So get out there and make it a great day. Choose your behaviors wisely. They will reflect your mood. All right, take care.